Hi, this is Mike Fisher with Light, and I'm gonna show you some advanced lighting techniques that you can use for your wedding or event setups. In this particular setup, I've used three PAR 36 lights to uplight behind the backdrop along the wall, and then two five-in-one wireless battery lights to uplight from the sides in a crisscross formation at the front of the backdrop. I've also put two LED light bars in the front of the head table to uplight inside the actual head table. Behind our bar setup, I've got two PAR64 lights behind the backdrop in a crisscross formation uplighting against the walls. At the top of the backdrop, I've got an LED light bar fastened pointing downwards to downlight the shear and also cast some color onto the chandelier. Inside the bar itself, I wanted to create a glowing effect and so I put two 5-in-1 wireless battery operated lights in a crisscross formation, coloring and filling light inside the whole bar. Beside the backdrop we have a tree and I've used a flat par to just throw a little light onto it to create some rim light as well as color uh, on the otherwise white tree. All of these lights have connected to my DMX control board wirelessly using a wireless transmitter connected to the, the DMX board and then different wireless receivers around my scene including the, the wireless receivers built into the 5-in-1 lights. I'm going to take you through all the different lights to show you how I set them up and why I considered each light for its location. The first thing I did with this backdrop was decide what kind of lights I wanted to run along the back behind the backdrop so that they would go up against the wall in an uplight fashion. There's a lot of space here and I really wanted a wide pattern and I feel like the PAR 36s were the lights that would give the widest pattern. So I ran three of them, one per panel, and I connected them using DMX. Every light in this setup is connected using DMX, but I used cables to connect each of these one by one, and the very last one, the farthest one, is connected using a wireless receiver. Because these lights need power, I was able to run extension cords behind the backdrop where they wouldn't be seen. These lights I set onto one DMX address so I could control them together, which was 001. Secondly, I wanted to select the correct lights so that I could uplight my backdrop, and I didn't want to have to put up lights right in front of the panels because it was going to be a high traffic area and there's really not that much room behind the head table. So I chose to go with the battery operated wireless 501 lights. These lights don't need any cables at all for DMX or for power, so they're perfect to be out of the way, not creating trip hazards and they create a huge light output. And in this formation, the light goes across and I pointed it all the way to the other end of the fabric so that the fabric is lit up from the side as well as the other light on its other side, symmetrically set up. And it too is going across on an angle, creating a crisscross pattern. Of all my lights, these lights produce the most amount of light and so they were the perfect light to do the backdrop. And I only needed to use two. I didn't want the head table to be in the dark, so I decided to put some lighting underneath the table. And I didn't want to create a lot of uh, mess or wires underneath the head table that could be hit or bumped from feet. So I used LED light bars and I ran them underneath on the floor, two of them, right at the front. These lights initially showed through the table at full strength where you could see the pattern of the plastic molding of the table. So what I ended up doing is putting sheer drapes on top of the light bars so that it would mute them and dampen the light. I also oriented them so that all the cables would be on this side so that there were no wires on the other side. I got these lights set up together on powering one to the other as each light has a, a receptacle for in power and a receptacle for out power. And I've got them connected using a DMX cable. And our first one, I've got a DMX wireless receiver set up on it. So I don't actually need to run a DMX cable from behind. So I did need power. If I wanted to completely eliminate any cables from coming from back here, I would have used the battery operated lights. 
but because I chose the LED light bars just to save space, I had to run one power cable down here and I chose to use an extension cord and what would be the best idea is to either use a cable mat or use some duct tape to cover it so that people coming through are not gonna trip on it. The last thing you want is somebody at your head table to wipe out an extension cord. So we'll do that later on, but just wanted to show that we do have one cable here. I would have normally considered doing an up light on the tree just to give it some shape so it's not simply a silhouette. But because of the position of this light here, it's actually just catching enough rim light to create an edge of light on the side so that there's a bit of a silhouette, but you can still see the shape and it, st it sticks out. Moving over to the bar, I've used two PAR 64s in the back set up as crisscross because despite the wide mouth on them, they actually act a bit like a spotlight. So I've got them set up further away because the further away from the wall or whatever object you're shooting on, um, the bigger the light is going to be and the more light there's going to be. These lights here, there's a mess of wires. Um, Again, I, I try to use the lights that need power and to be plugged in behind places that can hide it, such as this backdrop. But I've got power going up to the top of the backdrop. I've got these two PAR 64s powered, but I also have a wireless receiver for the DMX controller set up in the back of this light. So this one is picking up a wireless signal and sending DMX to my light outside the tree and then up to the other PAR 64, and then up to the top of the LED light bar in the backdrop. So that receiver is sending DMX to four different lights. At the top of this backdrop, I've got an LED light bar that I've cable tied to a drape support, and it's pointing downwards so that it lights the shear from above, which prevents me from having to put a light bar down at the floor where it could be kicked, or bumped. I've also put duct tape along the front of the light bar to act as sort of a, a barn door so that somebody who's um, looking at the light from this perspective won't see the LED lights. I can see them from my perspective, but anyone standing from behind the bar further away is not going to see the LEDs, the individual LEDs, and instead they're going to just see the light coming down onto the shear. I don't want a lot of light coming down because this chandelier is casting a yellow light and I don't want to have a conflict of light here, but it's creating just enough of a shade so that the backdrop is visible and there's a splash of color up there. The DMX cable plugged into the light bar going down the back of this shear plugged into one of the PAR64 lights that's hooked up to the, the DMX board using a wireless receiver. Inside of the bar, I've got two wireless battery-operated 501 lights. Because I don't want to have cables in an area where there's going to be a bar and people can step on them or drinks can get spilled on them, and these are shooting in a crisscross formation so that the whole bar is being lit up from bounce light. Panels that are like this, translucent panels, they bounce a lot of light but also let a lot of light pass through so this whole table ends up glowing. If I were to put these lights pointing towards the front, I would get two large globs of light and I don't want to have um, shapes on my bar. I want the whole thing to be lit evenly and this is the way that I was able to do it. Both of them have their antennas up. They're both set to address 97, which on my DMX board means I can control these separately. Lastly, I've got one flat par light down here which is throwing just a subtle amount of light up at this tree here so that it's not forgotten about. And lighting something from the side like this allows it to have shadow as well as what is called rim light so that you get a bit of light onto it, but still there's some shape and, and definition to it because you've got the contrast of darks and lights. So this light is also hooked up, um, is programmed at the same address as my backlighting so that the, the backlighting on the wall is the same color as this light here on the tree. So every one of these lights is hooked up to a wireless receiver. Um, of course, our battery-operated wireless lights have the wireless built in directly, 
but I've got a receiver underneath the head table so I don't have to run a DMX cable. I've got one wireless receiver behind this backdrop operating one, two, three, four lights. And I've got another wireless receiver operating the PARF 36s behind this backdrop uh, up on the up lighting. So it's a lot of lights and it seems complex, but it's really not at all. It's using different style of lights for different applications and all of them controlled on DMX, which makes my life way easier when I decide to actually set up and color them the way that I want them to be. I hope this video gave you some great ideas of how you can use your lights to color your event and give you a better sense of what these lights can do. I'm Mike Fisher with Eddie Light. For more tips and tricks and information, visit www.eddylight.com.